good evening to one and all present here um may i please request jayshree nagaraj ma'am to come and sit on the dais please so um today we we will spark a, a conversation between these experts i mean the all of these who, all the experts are going to be sitting here um from the industry and the thought leaders who are present in the audience on hygiene and infection prevention covid safe to provide a covid safe hospitality um let me introduce uh, the experts to you this is mrs jayshree nagaraj ma'am is the founder president chairperson and the force behind the professional housekeepers association has over 3 decades of rich experience in the hospitality industry she started her career with the welcome group school of management she has worked with sash in group of management um consultancy as their senior vice president of operations and worked with itc welcome group of hotels choice hotels raheja group of hotels best western premier and several others currently ms jashri is involved in the strategic planning and development of the professional housekeepers association and the pha uva uh, welcome to the panel ma'am may i call upon ms jyoti so um ms jyoti is an alumni of ihm and ct chennai and has completed her masters in facilities management for over a span of 20 plus years she has been an entrepreneur worked in the hospitality industry taj broy hayat uh, before moving to facilities um in facilities she's worked with the with bpl india moving to sodexo saskin atkins tcfm and now handles the soft services for international real estate partners She's also a guest lecturer with NI MMS Mumbai and Gem School. Welcome Ms Jyoti. Uh may I now welcome Ms Pail Joshi. Ms Pail is currently the executive housekeeper for the pre-opening Twin Hotels Complex Hilton and Hilton Garden in Bengaluru Embassy Manyata Business Park. She has more than 18 years of work experience in housekeeping, front office and training with India's leading hotel chains namely Hilton, Hyatt, you name it it's all there. I mean there there too many. Taj, ITC Welcome Group, Royal Orchids and Fortune Hotels. I think there's nothing left for you pile now. Yeah, she's a hotel management graduate from Lady Amrit Bai Dagar College Nagpur and she holds a diploma in training and development from the Indian Society for Training and Development New Delhi. She is a certified housekeeping instructor from the American Hotel and Lodging Association. Um she is a lifetime member of Professional Housekeepers Association since 2015. I'm sorry I forgot to mention that Jyoti um is also a proud life member of Professional Housekeepers Association since 6 years. Um welcome uh Pail. May I now um quickly welcome Dr. Deepi Sudagar. He's currently um serving as an associate professor at Garden City University Bangalore. He is also the director international internal quality uh, I'm sorry director of internal quality assurance cell, dean research and innovation council and CEO um GCU incubation center uh, and uh, vice president learning and development of PHA Karnataka chapter. Dr. Sudagar also worked in numerous managerial positions having successfully managed the F&B outlets. including the largest banqueting venue generating revenue over crores and um handling guests from 195 countries countries with the rain tree hotels taj hotel resorts and palaces in particular vivanta betaj konamera i mean um it's really interesting to see uh, the panel today with so much of experience having worked in um, all the hotels in the country and um it's it's nice to have ma'am here with um again I, i suppose three decades and more of experience um four decades ma'am says yes so um dr sudagar and i both of us are from academia um jyoti is from the facilities management sector um pail is from the hotels of course um so we quickly start with the discussion so um enough has been uh, tried and tested and sops have been established in hotels and other facilities to ensure hygiene and infection prevention today we would like to discuss few points that probably also needs equal amount of focus and attention so we are not really going to be talking about what hotels have been doing um all through these two and a half years of uh, pandemic 
but we'd like to touch upon a couple of topics that are closely related to, of course, the main topic you want to us, which is, uh, which is um, infection prevention and hygiene. BCP managers and public safety professionals are familiar with the concept of business continuity, also known as continuity of operations. We need to look at what is business continuity and how has it evolved in the era of COVID-19. Um, I would like Jyoti to take up uh, you know, this discussion point and um, tell us how BCP um, is implemented or what is it about now. Thank you, Sandhya. So, uh, BCP started somewhere when the ISO certification started. So, if people who are familiar with ISO 14001, 27001, that was the uh, uh, beginning of writing a BCP document. And it basically started with um, properties, corporates, hotels, uh, everyone writing about the then what they thought could be a risk, a hazard in the operations of whatever they were doing. So, if it was a corporate working, it was uh, the the corporate was talking about say what happens if a fire happens what happens if there's a bomb blast or there's a bomb threat call or if there is no water supply uh, because that was the advent when we started using packaged water what happens if the supplier doesn't come so there was uh, a team which was formed uh, with uh, basically the quality management uh, head uh, heading that particular team and it had pulled in uh, people from HR, from operations, from the businesses uh, to uh, think and act upon what could be an emergency, how should they rate it and what would be the backup plan if something ever happened. And with that started a BCP plan. Over the years it evolved from uh, bomb threats and uh, fires which had ha happened across the world to the situation when I, if I'm not mistaken, even in 2006 when I wrote uh, BCP for Saskin, I did mention, I took a mention of a pandemic, an epidemic, not a pandemic, an epidemic. But then also it was only very, very localized. It was never on the scale of what COVID came. So when COVID entered India, it was sometime in January when three cases were detected by three students who had come from China to Kerala and that is when they started hearing about COVID and it started spreading. Uh, people were still visiting China. I know uh, people who had visited till February China and they were coming back. But till then it was never deemed or thought of as a pandemic and uh, companies, hospitals, uh, corporates started thinking of what would they do if the infection came. Whether there would be a lockdown or not, I am not sure if people thought, but what companies did and who could afford it. And when I say who could afford it, is because even the IT, ITES or the e-commerce um, people were only thinking in terms of using, uh, they were all using desktops, not everyone was into laptops and work from home. It was a very, very mature corporates like maybe an IBM or a Cisco, which already had a work from home policy, uh, but none of the other companies had. And uh, somewhere in March, people started thinking about, okay, uh, to prevent uh, infection from happening because as the doctors researched, as reports from WHO came in, as reports from world across came in, people started talking of let people stay at home and work from home. That is when the advent of work from home came. Even then, people who were in our profession of say housekeeping, technical background, uh, managing facilities, managing hotels, we still had to work we still had to be there because if we were not there then um, the systems would collapse a simple plumbing system would then become the source of another infection altogether so that is how BCP started and disaster recovery started when um, so for the IT companies it was very easy they started procuring laptops 
they were anyway uh, using Wi-Fi but uh, you had uh, zoom calls which boomed at that point of time team apps boomed so they all rose up to the occasion to support all of us uh, when I talk about disaster recovery probably the IT's because they were very mature and they were able to work in a cloud had a system to ensure their operations were not affected uh, a flip cart a big basket had problems because they were told they could only deliver essentials so big basket still met the bucket Flipkart did not meet that bucket they were able to support the local suppliers the vendors the tailors they were all able to support us in terms of being allowed to work for minimum number of hours so they were also part of a business continuity plan but did anyone ever think that a housekeeper would be part of a business continuity plan while corporates yes they need uh, the person on the ground to ensure that the restrooms were flushed at least once a day were part of that system but the government never allowed us to do that they came down heavily on us so they were not part of the bigger picture on whoever thought of a BCP plan on a larger scale but yes we recovered uh, the corporates managed to recover the uh, local vendors managed to recover and I think uh, net net the people who were not part of a disaster recovery system were the hospitality industry the facility management companies because people started looking at us for reviving business but were not uh, ready to give us that business so disaster recovery was more in talking of um, uh, reviving businesses and like some of the GM's came up with uh, the thought process of um, delivering uh, high you know food from five-star hotels home that was part of it developing a bubble in terms of a hotel for uh, travelers who international travelers who needed quarantine that was part of a disaster recovery system it may not have been thought of earlier but it came into the picture so that's what is BCP and disaster recovery thank you Jyoti um, so on one hand we are talking about cleaning and sanitization to prevent infection but on the other hand we must definitely consider um, the S word that is being spoken about all the time and that is sustainability Ms. Pyle, what is your take on this and what are the objectives of sanitization and sustainability? So, um, sanitization on one part talks about removing infections, um, ensuring, with, with the pandemic being here, ensuring there's no virus, uh, areas are sanitized, areas are cleaned, hygienic and everything. At the same time, we want the sustainability aspect to come in. Does sanitization and sustainability go, do these two go hand in hand? Well, that's a question we need to ask ourselves. Because sustainability is all about, you know, reducing the impact on the environment uh, with green best practices. And with sanitization being the most important part in our day-to-day -day life, especially once the COVID came in, there has been uh, a lot of use of water, there have been a lot of use of chemicals, there has been a lot of use of, you know, these rubber gloves and masks and everything. So, has sustainability been affected by all that? Yes, it has. What have we done about it is something which need to probably we think of, uh, we need to think about. Um, at some point of time, when we started off, probably, you know, it, uh, sustainability took a back seat. Everybody was only focusing on sanitization of areas, offices, nobody was coming out of the house, the, uh, you know, the waste that was coming out of the house or the hotels uh, had to be uh, channeled in such a way that it is not in impacting the environment. This happened, eventually it did. People were very conscious about how it is being discarded. But the way it started, uh, well, initially they were not in hand in hand, is probably what right rightly said um, file okay um, so dr. Sudhagar this is for you to take 
how and what the academia is doing to gear the hotel school students to be able to handle the pandemic during inter internships or maybe um, to be able to handle you know when they get placed in hotels x y or z it would be anything so is academia doing something about training them Abs on these absolutely first uh, like to uh, throw your light what happened during the pandemic in the beginning of the pandemic we had uh, two sets of students one student who are pursuing uh, with our university we had other set of students who are already doing their industrial exposure training when the industrial exposure training was happening we were oh, so worried uh, because in the university it was easy for us to uh, transit from an offline mode to an online mode using a platform everything was un under control but we had a worry like uh, what the hotels may be doing it whether our industrial exposure training the students are going to be sent back to the colleges what will be the uh, future but fortunately i must say almost all the best brands they have retained the students they have provided three options for the students number one they can go back to their home if it is required if they are not comfortable number two they have been provided with an opportunity to work stay in the hotel enjoy the five star luxury number three they invested more most on training the students to handle the pandemic situation in the most effective manner so during this scenario our students apart from learning the basic operations they also have learned advanced cleaning advanced processes advanced uh, uh, usage of equipments how to handle their most complicated situations so that came out as a blessing for us in disguise so our students who had worked during the pandemic pe uh, period they have literally learned apart from the basic operations of the hotel in terms of how to do a crisis management so after listening to this we in the university apart from teaching the regular curriculum we have introduced how our students can be thought about uh, what's happening in the hotel during the pandemic i must uh, thank uh, our professional housekeepers association and the phu wa we have conducted a lot of webinars our students greatly benefited from the webinars and these webinars were actually like uh, spearheaded by the industry leaders which actually helped us to get to understand what's happening in the industry during the pandemic and what set of revision needs to be done in the curriculum not just during the pandemic but in the future also so it has provided a great opportunity for us to understand what's happening in the industry and how that could be included in the curriculum probably pandemic may come back after 2 years or 3 years or some other disaster also may be coming in so we have introduced lot of uh, curriculum enhancement in terms of not just covering uh, basic operations but also understanding the advanced cleaning equipment process how to handle various uh, situations crisis management that has actually helped the students to have better career options uh, even in hotel industry T today our students if they want to work in hospitals they have the skills they have the knowledge they have the attitude and they have the standards what is required even for uh, working in a hospital setting right. not just in a hotel setting right. so in this way i would feel that uh, it's a great blessing we have include, uh, included in the curriculum i'm sure as changes happening in the industry that's going to be uh, uh, happening in our academia also yeah. so that both the industry and academia can travel together to ensure that whatever may be the exigencies we will able to handle more effectively and prosper Thank you, Dr. Sudhakar. And I think I must mention that at Ramya University, what we did was we introduced a course called Life Skills, where you know we had a lot of students coming back and saying, "Because, ma'am, we're too scared to work in hotels during COVID because they would ask us to serve guests inside the rooms and clean the rooms and all of that." So I think um, you know the technical part is good enough, like you were mentioning, but I think some kind of a attitudinal training behavioral Absolutely. training needs to be given to them to let them don't be scared about these things True. but the hotel takes good care good you know care give them all kinds True. of um, uh, a P, i mean a ppes and everything and you know everything is safe to be you know working there right. um okay thank you and thank you for having shared that with us um jashi ma'am just to ask you a question so um what have we as an association what what was our contribution during this covid time now dr sudhakar did mention that you know we had number of webinars um you know to to share knowledge with you know the industry and the experts and everybody else so anything else that you can think about in fact uh, without even uh, knowing uh, you know this kind of a disaster would happen from past 3 years in 2015 when we have uh, started phta that time itself our uh, biggest mantra was uh, to synergize uh, between the academia and the industry that was one of the main mantras of pha that is how we launched pha you are uh, soon after 2 years we launched pha as a national body 
and uh, i'm so proud to say that today under uh, 35 we like members like soldiers like warriors we were together you know uh, able to face this uh, disaster this pandemic of the country irrespective of whether it is hospitality or health care or facilities or academy or aviation uh, now we, we came together you know the sad part is many of our life members lost the job many of us are relocated and uh, many of us uh, has had a cultural shock how to take up these new challenges but uh, fortunately this platform of pha with the support of industry leaders all the top management and everyone you know today we can uh, confidently say that any challenges any contingency plan or any housekeeping audit or any training needs required for the industry pha is confident enough to back them up and be with uh, every sector to Uh, as an assistant as an associate we are going to be with everyone to face the challenges and to uplift the issues of the country thank you ma'am it's a lot of contribution that you and the association all of that us is, have made that is why it is very important now as we have had a, a general managers round table conference and now it is very evident that there is a wide gap between the top management and the uh, you know service providers and in between the middle level managers there is a wide gap so there is lot of scope which i uh, i keep saying this to all uh, right from our uh, business associate members our associate support partners everybody now to take use of the platform like pha to reach the top management and again we in turn can associate with the top management and give an excellent uh, unified standardized solution to all our members and we always used to you know see in the platform that when um, an executive housekeeper or somebody had a concern over what kind of chemical to use for disinfection and the others we had experienced people talking about what is best for what kind of uh, you know surface and all of that and uh, so since we have vendors in the association i think they also got an idea of what is a real requirement of the industry during this um, you know pandemic period and i think it really helped everybody in the in the in the group certainly on yeah. all our vendor members are so kind and so uh, thirsty and so supportive uh, anything I, we would uh, go back to them and say that this is what we require and they are ready to uh, customize it manufacture it and serve, service to our members and other thing what i want to say that we pha follow in robin hood theory you know mm-hmm. we are we don't have only branded uh, executive housekeepers as our members okay. we also have non branded executive housekeepers as our members Okay. so what happens is a non branded uh, executive housekeepers more or less they don't even uh, know how to reach the branded executive housekeepers say it be itc you uh, know corporate housekeeper you're talking about uh, over, uh, the bigger general, and in the, general okay the smaller uh, like chains, madam yeah. here in in, in between mm-hmm. so but this is a platform which uh, bridges all type of managers together and even the top branded executive housekeepers expertise are the humble enough uh, to reach the non branded executive housekeepers to Uh, give them kind of a solution uh, so that today everything is possible in one network you know our national life member group it may be or our uh, event it may be or one on one it may be so nothing is impossible as far as pha members are concerned all right thank you ma'am um just one small round of uh, questions again to each one of you um i'm sure we'll uh, there'll be quick responses from everybody So um Jyoti is it true that now we are all trained and that we will be able to handle such situations without fear I think we are as hoteliers we've always been trained to handle any kind of situation whether it's been fires or floods and the covid of course has made all of us rise to the occasion yes we are uh, I mean as long as it is something like covid I can't predict more than that um um uh, pail this is for you now so um having seen it all during covid what has been the perception of the customers and employees with regard to hygiene and infection prevention what has been their um, perception yeah. so i'll i'll tell you a little uh, personal experience that i've had yes uh, when it comes to customers and i would i'm not saying customers i would say guests yes. and uh, team members uh, working with us so during the covid um, and this was during the first pandemic first lockdown that happened i was one of the very few team members who stayed in the hotel and for 45 days we were in the hotel um, 
obviously taking care of all the guests who were in the hotel and the team members who were there. And as far as possible, the ones who were outside were sent on leave, ensuring you know their leaves are taken care of, they don't lose their salary and all. The perception that the guests had and the employees had was like, probably hotel is the most safe haven right now in this world you said where, it, yes. where they can stay, they're taken care of. It, it was like a bubble. And, I, and even I think till now, till recently, uh, hotels have been creating that bubble for, you know, uh, conference guests coming in or I also remember during the uh, cricket matches, this was this was one big thing that was happening there. Right. There was a bubble created where the players would stay on one floor. But yes, it was a safe haven for everybody because uh, hotels ensured uh, that the hygiene, the sanitation and uh, most of all, uh, the medical requirements of the guests and the team members were taken. Thank you. That was awesome to hear. Um, so I think we would kind of um, sum up the conversation, the discussion right now. So um, Sudhagar, I just wanted to ask you this. Um, yeah, on one hand, again, we've been um, you know witnessing loss of life, a lot of trauma, difficulties in serving the COVID-affected guests. Yet on the other hand, it has transformed the way students learn, work and excel. You did in fact speak about this a couple of minutes ago. Is there anything more that you'd want to talk about? I think uh, the best uh, idea to handle any kind of scenarios, uh, Mama was saying that uh, there could be a uh, flood or uh, earthquake or terrorist attack or it could be a pandemic. Tomorrow recession is going to come in already talks on non. So I think hotel industry as such as well as academia should uh, proactively collaborate, imagine the worst possible scenarios, mm -hmm. innovate, have our strategies in place mm -hmm. that will help us to go in a longer run in terms of handling any kind of exigencies which may be coming on our way. Instead of crying on the day when the situation struck us, if you are able to imagine what are the worst case scenarios may happen in all the uh, areas, I'm sure I think uh, we can do a great job instead of having a stress in the last moment in terms of handling the employees, in terms of handling the guests, in terms of the equipment or the process or even in terms of like uh, uh, transiting based on the government uh, rules and regulations. I think uh, more of research and innovation is required between the industry and academia and we should have a standard uh, repository in place to handle any kind of crisis, any kind of exigencies that would uh, uh, give us a great kickstart and uh, survive and also to succeed uh, in terms of our business goals, in terms of the expectations of the customers and the other stakeholders who are directly or indirectly involved. That's the point I did. Thank you. I think we from Academia have to make sure that the students will join the industry because there's Absolutely. already a lot of, um, you know, negative um, True. Uh, talk about students not being want, uh, you know, not being want to be a part of the industry. Like Pyle was saying, if we can tell them that this is what is happening with, in hotels and there's nothing to worry about and that you must go back there, I think um, we could contribute in our own way, yeah. isn't it? I mean, Def definitely, yeah. definitely you can do yeah. it. Yeah. I like to add on like, uh, we are going to have our uh, PHA UA uh, anniversary in the month of November. Okay. During that time, we are going to bring in the Gen Z and Gen Y on the platform with okay. the leaders okay. and give you a platform to get to understand each other so that hotels can able to realign the strategies in such a way that students' expectations are met Absolutely. and also they are joining back into the industry. All right, right. that would be Hotel nice. Man. Yes, thank you. I just wanted to add one thing that, yeah. you know, uh, with the last two years being so difficult on the students, uh, they've really not had the exposure of, you know, practically being in a hotel. Mm. And, uh, and, and I have recently opened a hotel, a twin hotel, and we have recruited a lot of freshers. Uh, for them, directly getting into that space and being there was very difficult. Absolutely. So, uh, I, un I completely understand and I do not blame uh, you know, anybody here, not even the students, not us or not even the institutes, but it was just a situation that was so bad. Right. So probably going further, pr these the students probably need to be made aware of certain situations like these that would come up in future okay. and get them trained beforehand okay. so that when they actually join the industry, they don't run away. Okay, <laughs> good one. Okay, um, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, are there any questions from the audience that the experts answer you have any questions please sorry anybody
Okay. Before uh, we winding up, I must thank uh, sincerely my speech, Mr. Jayant. During this very auspicious week, International Hospital Housekeepers Week, he has made all of us uh, to be together in this uh, under one roof, which never happened so far. So far, we none of the uh, life members got together during this week. So blessing in this guy's, uh, he has uh, held the event like this uh, during this uh, International uh, Housekeepers Week. I sincerely wish. Each one of you, uh, interna International Hospitality Housekeepers Week, and it's uh, very nice of Mice Bliss to give us a platform like this to celebrate. Thank you. Um, thanks to the panel members, the experts, I would say. Dr. Sudhagar, thank you. Pyle, thank you. Ma'am, thanks. And um, Jyoti, for sure, thank you so much.